As someone who owns an NFT project myself, I constantly get asked by people, what exactly are NFTs? What are its use cases? And are they all just a scam? So in this video, I'm going to go over exactly what you need to know about NFTs and some of the major use cases that I see as someone who is a founder of an NFT project for nearly two years now. So first things first, what exactly are NFTs? Well, NFTs stand for non-fungible tokens and they're unique digital assets that represent ownership or proof of authenticity of a specific item or piece of content usually stored on the blockchain, aka you're able to own something digital and verify that you actually own something that isn't in the physical world, but instead the digital world. Each NFT is unique by nature. That's where the non-fungible token aspect comes in. And the ownership of each specific NFT is actually stored on the blockchain. So what's cool about this is you can verify that you own the correct NFT and part of the correct collection, for example, by looking on the blockchain itself. And within this, there are different smart contracts that can create NFTs and add even more customization, such as enforced royalties. Now, a lot of people, when they think of NFTs, they think of the ape that you see on the right hand side. This is a board ape yacht club. But in reality, guys, it's not just about the image when it comes to NFTs, but more so about the ownership aspect. Fun fact, these images aren't even stored on the blockchain unless it's Bitcoin. They're actually stored on a third party site. These NFTs, can actually be on any blockchain out there, but the two biggest blockchains for NFTs are Ethereum and Solana. They have both the largest markets as well as volume, and the biggest NFT collections have historically always been on Ethereum. Now let's get into a little bit of a background of NFTs because I find this pretty interesting. CryptoPunks, which you'll see on this right-hand side, was one of the first generative NFT projects ever created, and this was on Ethereum back in 2017, and some of the sales have been literally in the millions of dollars, and and even with the big correction and big crash of NFTs recently, they're still having over a $100,000 floor. And a lot of times there aren't any for sale at all. During 2017, there were also some other large projects such as CryptoKitties that gained a lot of traction at that time. But because Ethereum was even less scalable than it is today, these gas and transaction fees were absolutely horrendous. It wasn't actually until 2020 when GameStop and AMC and all this craziness was happening in the world that NFTs really started to take off. And things like Board Ape Yacht Club went from just a couple hundred dollars to mint to over a hundred thousand dollars, over a four hundred thousand dollars at one point in time. And there were different mainstream projects out there, such as NBA Top Shots, that onboarded a lot of Web2 users, including myself, to the NFT scene. Now, the market back then grew absolutely rapidly, but now to catch you guys up to speed, NFTs across the board have been on a steady decline as speculation is a lot lower than it used to be. More attention is also being focused on more liquid assets such as meme coins for the DGENs out there. And a lot of NFTs have really been scams or failed projects. And it's really thrown a lot of people away from NFTs, even though the technology itself is so useful, which I'll go over. Another reason that NFTs have really taken a back burner is a lot more serious projects realize that they can make a lot more money doing a traditional fungible token sale rather than an NFT raise. An NFT is called an NFT because it's a unique image not all of the tokens are the same. They're all different. Whereas fungible tokens, all the token is the same. So think of something like Ethereum, for example. It's all Ethereum, right? Or it's all Cardano. It's all Polygon, whatever you want to say. Now, most NFTs are PFP collections that will try to add some sort of narrative or utility on top of them as the main reason to hold that asset. And what's really interesting with NFTs is you basically have all of these different traits that an artist makes. You assign each of these traits a random random percentage of how often they occur. And then you'll have a computer program generate 10,000 random images and random variations using these traits. And that's why some NFTs are a lot more rare than others within a collection because they might have a lot more rare or a lot less common traits than some of the other NFTs. Now, kind of how the process goes is these collections will first execute their mint. And this is the very first time that the NFTs come into existence. This is when they are created, they are put on the blockchain itself. And this is where you're actually able to get the NFT in your wallet. And typically at this point in time, they set a supply as well as a price you need to pay to get into the ground floor. When you actually
actually mint these different NFTs, you have no idea what your NFT is going to look like or how rare this is going to be. So it's nice as sometimes you can get a super rare NFT that can go for 10 times the floor or the cheapest NFT on the market. Typically for these different NFT mints, even today, you're going to have some sort of whitelist or allow list, which is a whole entire list of wallet addresses that are allowed to participate in the mint or in the sale. And usually this is given out to people that engage or are early participators in the project that they think are going to be long-term holders or community members. Each project will typically explain what their goals are and what the product they're trying to make or have already made is. And this is ultimately what we call utility or the reason that you would own a specific NFT. Utility can range in a lot of different aspects, which I'll go over shortly, but it can be about art. It can be about brand. It can be about gaming. It can be about raising money to invest in crypto miners and splitting the reward. Really, the options are unlimited. So let's get into some of these different NFT use cases that we've seen as utility already or have major companies that are using this technology to solve these different problems. One of the main things is that it's verifiable digital ownership of any asset. So if you think about it, guys, let's say I want to sell you something online that's completely digital and there's no physical product. How do we actually make sure it's the authentic thing? How do we make sure it's the right thing? This is where NFTs are actually really cool. It represents that ownership. And with that ownership, you can buy, sell, and trade any asset, which we haven't been able to do before. NFTs are also a really great way to fundraise or kickstart different ideas. If you think about it, guys, you can raise money from anywhere in the world with an NFT sale. You don't have to worry about chargebacks or anything because you get the crypto and then it's in your wallet. You now have all these people that own your NFT that want to see the NFT succeed and can help grow your business and fulfill whichever utility that you're trying to do. And you didn't even have to give up any equity in the process. So in my personal opinion, it's a way better way to actually fundraise and kickstart any idea you have, as well as doing a regular fungible token sale if you want to go that route instead. Another use case is actually having token gated communities. This is what we do with Jelly Cubes, where we say, hey, instead of paying a monthly subscription to join our group, you can instead own our NFT and you can get access to all these different channels in our Discord where we go over different investments, we go over different things happening in the space, blah, blah, blah. And what's really cool about it is instead of a subscription where you pay every month and then the moment you cancel, you don't have any value. What's cool with the NFT is you own part of that community. So you buy the NFT, you get all of this access. And if the NFT does better over time or people want to be part of that group, now all of a sudden you could potentially sell that NFT for more than you paid with it. You have that ownership. And then as far as a project founder side, you are potentially able to raise way more money up front through the capital raise of your NFT sale. And then you also have royalties where every single time an NFT gets bought or sold on the secondary, you get a percentage of the sale and it makes up for a lot of that subscription. You also have other things such as art or digital collectible items in general. There's a lot of different digital artists out there and now they can actually monetize their work and people can collect these different works. And there's been different pieces of art from Beeple, for example, that have sold for tens of millions of dollars in the digital form. Another major use case is real world assets such as real estate that can be fractionalized. If you think about it, guys, let's say I have this water bottle and this water bottle is $1,000. I can take this water bottle, turn it into an NFT, and now I can buy and sell that NFT. And now you can have ownership of that. And then I can say, hey, that NFT not only authenticates that this is the right bottle, but if you ever wanted this physical bottle in real life, you can redeem that NFT and you can get this bottle sent to you instead. Now, what's really cool is let's say this bottle was super expensive. I could cut this bottle into 10 different pieces and I could sell 10 different NFTs that represent one tenth of the ownership of this water bottle. So it's really cool. You can do that with real estate, which I think is going to be a big thing as many people can't actually afford real estate anymore. And now you can take a million dollar home and split up the ownership between a thousand people and have that verifiable and tradable and authenticated on the blockchain. There's also IP expansion and brand plays. We saw Pudgy Penguins do this very well, where they were able to take this art concept, build it into a brand, and then launch a bunch of toys that they already had a lot of customers with, with people that were owning their NFTs. You can even have books and articles where people can own an NFT of a book and actually read that book through the NFT and collect that. One of the things that I'm really excited for is event tickets or even music albums that unlock content. Instead of going to a concert and having a paper ticket, now all of a sudden you could have that as an NFT. It's verifiable. I can easily buy, sell, and trade that. And 
people that are buying from me know that it's actually legit. So you can get rid of some of these third party monopolies like Ticketmaster and StubHub, for example, and create a marketplace that even has royalties for each sale that goes back to the sports venue or goes back to the artist, whatever the case is. So I'm really excited to see this come to fruition. And then you can keep those different tickets in your wallet as memories or collectible items. And then in the future, artists could even be like, hey, you own 10 of my NFTs. I'm going to give you exclusive access to one of my future sales, which are always sold out. You can also have different upgradable loyalty incentives. I kind of brought that up just recently with how, for example, Taylor Swift can say, hey, if you own 10 of my tickets, you're going to get exclusive access to my next sale. But you could do different things even with restaurants where now all of a sudden they could almost upgrade this NFT character every time they go to the restaurant and it can unlock additional rewards. And at any point in time, they could sell that character to someone else and bank off all those points and leveling up that they did by going to that store. As far as two other things I want to bring up, you have different fashion and online wearables for metaverse integrations, for example. I think a lot more things are going digital and you've already seen Nike for years now make these digital shoes that you can also get in person. And what's really cool is you can verify the authenticity of these different fashion items that are frequently scammed and fraudulent by using NFT technology. And then the last thing is, is digital identities. They call them DIDs. I think this is going to be very big in the future where you can have an NFT verify your digital identity. And this could be used for different things in the future, such as voting for who the next president is rather than all these paper votes and manipulation that's currently happening in systems today. Just to quickly go through some of these a little more in detail, imagine in gaming instead of buying all these skills on Fortnite or Counter-Strike and not actually having ownership of them. Imagine actually being able to own them and sell them in the future rather than just kind of burning through your money. And some of these different NFTs can actually unlock exclusive content in-game as well. I had already mentioned this real estate idea of being able to fractionalize this real estate. And you can do this real-world assets with almost anything. BlackRock actually got into this. They're going to be spending millions, if not billions of dollars on RWA infrastructure in different projects. And it can be real estate. It can be cars, it can be businesses, it can be uh, water bottles, it can be headphones, it can literally be anything. You have the event tickets that I also brought up, different stuff like the token gated communities with the alpha groups such as Jelly Cubes, for example, the brand and IP expansion with Pudgy Penguins, being able to already have an audience on the NFT side of things that are already buying your products and helping spread the word of the brand and carrying that message and using their network to further the amount of people that know about it. You also have have these books and articles, and of course, this different fashion and metaverse stuff that I had brought up already. To kind of summarize everything I said in this video, there is so many different use cases that you can actually use with the NFT technology itself. But the problem is, is a lot of the NFTs that have been launching don't actually have a core product or building these different things or know what they're doing. And I'm talking about these collection PFPs. A lot of them really don't succeed. And the failure rate is extremely high in this space. And there's a lot of different rugs, there's different scams all over the place. Now, there are some NFT projects that actually perform very well as assets in the long run, but the market has been slow and a lot of these are pretty rare. You don't see too many projects that survive in the long run. And most of the money to be made in this space, actually, at this point in time, guys, is just getting into these NFT projects early that have a lot of hype and then selling them quickly. A lot of the major use cases for NFTs, such as ticketing, aren't necessarily being solved by these different NFT collections that you can buy and sell. But instead, you'll have some sort of massive or some sort of really large project that has a fungible token that you can buy and sell on a centralized exchange, for example. And they'll use or leverage the NFT technology in their business. But the main sale or the main product or the main thing you can invest in isn't actually the NFTs in this situation, but it's more so their actual crypto token. And then they're just using the NFT technology to fulfill their product and use case. And the reason they didn't sell NFTs themselves is because like I said earlier in this video, they can raise significantly more money and have way more liquidity by just launching their own fungible token instead. All that being said, there's still some great NFT projects out there. I really love Pudgy Penguins. And of course, I love my own project, Jelly Cubes. And I do think that the NFT market will eventually rebound when it comes to these different collectible PFPs. Just realize though, guys, that the space has changed so much and that a lot of these collections or a lot of these projects are simply not going to make it.